Now I'm going to put the pinion gear in with the uh, input shaft, the yoke shaft, back into the case. So what I always like to do, again, is put a little bit of gear loop inside the housing to aid putting it in. Don't forget to change the O-ring on the housing itself, on the pinion housing that you're going to put in. It's called the bearing carrier housing and the upper gear housing. Um, putting the plastic shims, the original ones, back on here, because um, I still have those in stock. The ones you will probably use are stainless steel, so it's going to look a little different. The shims only fit one way. They will not go. There's a slot on one side, and it is larger on the top than on the bottom, so it's not too hard to do that. So once I get that lined up, I can put my, my bolts in. Get those started. That's all, thank you. One. And I'll speed this up. So you don't have to watch me putting the bolts back in. So I will speed this up so you don't have to watch me put the bolts back in. Alright, so the torque spec, once I get all the bolts in, is 12 to 14. So I'm going to torque these again across evenly. Barely hear the torque wrench click because we're only lightly torquing this. Good. All right. So that really wraps up what we're doing. We've gotten the housing all back together. Um, I've got the top cover on. I have that torqued. I have left the cone clutch out. Don't forget that. I have the input shaft installed, and the next what we'll do is we're going to measure our gear lash in here, okay, and what that, I can move that gear, I can hear gear lash on the upper, and I can feel gear lash on the lower as well. So that's a good sign. We're going to go ahead and set our dial indicator up in the next video and measure the gear lash for you. All right, we have measured the gear lash on the lower gear and the upper gear. We have that dimension. Now what I'm going to do is mix up a little gear marking compound. So uh, if you're a Volvo dealer, you should be using this. It's basically a yellow powder. Part number is 3807716. It's called marking ink. Mix it. I use a little bit of oil. There's no instructions with it. So a little bit of gear lube I mix with it. Use a little acid brush and what I need to do is I need to paint the lower and the upper gear teeth on the convex side. So basically the convex side, the rounded side. Both, both three sets of teeth, put that marking compound on there from the heel to the toe, from the crest to the root, which means the whole tooth, right? And then I'm gonna do the upper while I'm at it, because I need to. I just really look at the at the lower gear, but I like to check the upper just for my own two cents. So now that that's marked, what we're going to do is we are going to load the drive and then we're going to rotate it. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my lab assistant Paul give me a hand. He's going to come over here and he's going to hold this stick. It's a piece of oak I made, a uh, fancy part number I made up. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. It's about an inch and a quarter wide. Um, and I use like oak from a pallet or something and it fits between the two cups of the gear. And then what he's gonna do is he's gonna push down on it some to put a load on it. I'm gonna drive the gear teeth to act like it's in gear and that's gonna cut the teeth and the marking compound. So then we can see the contact pattern of the gear teeth, okay? Make sure that you rotate it in the correct direction 
So being that this is a standard stern drive, left from the rear of the engine, so right from the front of the drive. And I'm gonna rotate this about six times. And he's got a good load on it, he's making me get it work. compound on the gear tooth and I'll zoom in for you. All right, I have loaded the drive. We've turned it over and put a board in here and put some tension on it while I cranked it in the right direction of rotation. That has uh, moved the marking compound out of the way. So when the teeth come together, it just scrapes the marking compound out of the way. So if I want to look at what the contact pattern is supposed to be, the book will tell me that it is in reference to be on the forward and reverse gear, on the drive side of the convex side of the gear, the die pattern should be nearly oval in shape, positioned halfway up the gear tooth, and it should be displaced towards the smaller end of the tooth. So if I look in here, I can see that it's displaced about halfway up the gear tooth. It ends about three quarters of the way down the gear tooth. And it probably on the other end ends maybe a third of the way. So it is displaced towards the toe. The big thing that I don't want to see is the pattern is running off the end of the toe. So the small end of the tooth is called the toe of the tooth. The large end of the tooth, the thicker end down there is called the heel end of the tooth. The very depth of the tooth where it meets the base of the center part of the gear is called the root of the gear tooth. And the top of the gear tooth here where it comes to a point is called the crest. So again, the toe end, the thick end is the heel end, the root and the crest of the gear tooth. Pattern should be displaced more towards the toe, not running off the toe, and about halfway up the gear tooth and it should be oval in shape. Looks good. Gear marking compound's a little wet. I added a little bit too much oil, but we still got a really good pattern. I'm gonna just kind of scrooch down and look at the upper and see what I see on that gear tooth. And that one, get a better picture of it. Yep. All right, so it looks about the same. It looks towards the toe. It's not running off the toe and it is displaced in the middle. Yeah, looks good. 